Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's another wonderful day to be serving the Lord. It's a wonderful day just to be alive, just to be able to say that, hey, I got out of bed this morning. I'm able to um, get around and be able to do the things that I like to do, whether it's your job or uh, something that you find enjoyable. It's just a wonderful day because God has given us this this breath within us he's given us a heart he's given us our lungs and we take all these things for granted and i'm just thankful so thankful for um the blessings of the lord and for everything that he does for us i i, I know i can't physically see you right now but i i feel like some of you just raising your hands and along with me and saying you you're you're thankful for the blessings of the Lord. I mean, the Lord has blessed us. I, I don't know about you, but I got my hand up. I'm praising God because God has blessed us so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Think about it. You sit down at night, and what do you do? You watch your TV. That's a blessing from God. You turn on your light switch. That's a blessing from God. You have all these different things that you do each and every day. You you, you cover up in your blanket when you go to bed. That's a blessing from God. And we don't realize how grateful, or we don't realize how, how spoiled we really are by the blessings that God blesses us with. I mean, we are so spoiled that um we keep wanting more and more and more and i don't want to ramble on too much on the introduction but i want to uh say how happy i am that um everything is just going great for everybody i, I know there's war it's kind of like a war going on and a famine poverty all these different things but uh we can rejoice knowing god is in control elections and um different things going on within our country within the world itself um there's a lot that we could be distressed about but there's a lot we can also rejoice about and Believe it or not, there's a lot we can do about it. Um, but anyway, if you have your Bible handy, um, I'm going to try and get through this. I, I, I took a cough drop, and uh, so uh, maybe I won't cough too much. And, and uh, Anyway, if you have your Bibles handy, it's First Peter chapter 4 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 8. I use King James Version. It's not nothing against any other version. It's just what I like. Uh, and it says, And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Verse 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, even so the minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Heavenly Father, I thank you today and I praise you for your mercy, your grace. Oh God, for your grace. Sometimes I, I, I feel like I um, take the barrel of grace and I try to empty it out because I, I just uh, mess up so much, Lord. But I, I, I'm so thankful that it never runs dry. And Lord, I pray that you would anoint me to preach as a dying man to dying men and women. And Lord, that this message would go forth and accomplish, Lord, what you want it to accomplish. Not what the devil wants it to accomplish or any man wants it to, but what you want it to. In your precious and holy name, amen and amen. 
Um, before I get started, there is one thing I want to say. Please share these videos, uh, not because of me, just because people are lost, they're dying, they're, 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 there's a lot of people that are in different situations, and they need an answer, and I'm not saying I am the answer, I'm saying I know who the answer is, and I can point them to the answer, the one that can save them, the one that can deliver them, so the best way that we can do that is come together as a community share the videos let people know that hey there is a better way than the way that we're living there is a better way than living in sin and doing all these things that we know are unacceptable to christ all right now that i got that out of my system i want to talk to you about charity love i was i have this app on my phone and every day it gives a and i highly recommend it because everybody nowadays has a smartphone but um it's uh bible gate yeah bible gateway and i highly recommend it because uh it is it's so useful they have a verse of the day and every verse here lately has been about charity and i thought well, you know, they pick a theme and then they stick with it. But there was other things that was pointing towards charity, love. And when I would see a scripture, it would always be about love and charity. And then I would think, well, you know, that's not directed to me. It's just coincidence. But then I thought, well, I don't know if... Because it kept going on and on and on. And then I thought, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to preach this. I don't know if I'm supposed to take it and pray over it or what. And here we are. I'm going to preach to you about charity, love. There is, it says, charity, love, covereth a multi the multitude of sins. The multitude of sins the biggest act of love was when they put the throne the throne of thorns or the crown of thorns that crown not the throne i'm sorry um the crown of thorns victor thorns upon jesus's head and that blood ran down and each drop of blood that came down from those thorns had nothing but love in them for you and for me. How many of you ever done a selfless act? Now think about this. Not something that you were required to do. Not something that you were paid to do. A selfless act. I'm talking about not something that would that we're trying to do just to be able to make ourselves feel better completely selfless think about it are there any good selfless acts anymore does anybody do a good selfless act does anybody actually do things without expecting anything in return have you done anything in your life that was completely and honestly selfless. I gotta get my glasses back on here. Let me look back at verse verse nine. Use hos hospit uh, hospitality one to another. I'm so sorry, I have a speech problem. Um, uh, Y'all probably know that by now. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Now, and even in, you know, even in, in uh, 
different scriptures. Use hospitality without grudging. Use love. Use charity. Use your abilities that God has given you without grudging, without expecting something in return, without saying, I have to have something before you before I perform any services, you've got to pay me up front. You've got to show me, you know, what you've got for me before I will do anything for you. No, that's not the way it works, church. Because if Jesus did that, we would all be damned to hell. Come on now. What if Jesus said, I got to see that you're going to be good. I got to see that you're going to live the right path. I got to see that you're going to be on the right and the straight and narrow before I get upon that cross. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to suffer. Why would I do that when I know that you're not going to listen to me anyway? But no, he said, I'm going to do it regardless because I know that people are dying, people are lost, and they need a Savior. The ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate act of hospitality. But what about you? What are you doing? What love, what charity are you showing? What charity is covering the multitude of sins? What charity is going forth? Is it in your voice? Can people, when they talk to you, can they hear that, excuse me, that charity in your voice? Can they hear that love? Can they just know that you are a saint of God? Or do they hear a bitterness, an anger? Mm. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, the Lord's dealing with me right now. Give me just a minute. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bitterness. That struck something in my heart. Lord be dealing with me. We have so many things that we encounter over the years, and I don't, I don't want to be one of those preachers that you know preach to the choir all the time, and the choir um, hears the same message all the time, but. We have so many things, so many things that happen to us each and every day. <coughs> Excuse me. And we take all those things that happen, good or bad, and we pack it inside. And unless we find a healthy release for it, it stays in there. It just stays packed inside of us, and it just eats at us. And we get so bitter in our heart and in our soul because we can't figure things out. I mean, maybe it's just me and my mindset, but... I mean, I, I've I've gotten so bitter before because it was just like, well, to be honest with you, I I, I was uh, always felt like I was getting passed up. You know, like uh, nowadays I drive real slow, so I do get passed up. But I mean, in life, um, I felt like I was always getting passed up. I always felt like I was a. Uh, you know, on the sideline, and and everybody else was, you know, getting um, up on the pedestal, and and I was just in the background and uh, never seen. That, that's that's just me, and it, and it caused me to become bitter, and and when you get bitter, you become selfish. You become needy. You become so hurt that you want things to fulfill yours to fulfill that 
Well, to be honest, to fulfill that pain, you got to find a way to be able to deal with that pain. And sometimes you don't even realize that that pain is still there. Sometimes you don't even realize that that heartache is still a heartache. I mean, we bury it so deep down inside of our soul that we haven't searched it in years. But God knows that it is still there. Maybe it's even a bitterness towards God. Maybe it's even a bitterness towards our spouse or something. I mean, I've told my wife before. I said I... She she said to do something, and you know, and I knew that she didn't want really want me to because when a woman says, "Okay, go have fun," it means don't go and have fun. Yeah, you know, just a little joke, but um, but seriously, I there's been situations where I knew that she wasn't comfortable with me doing something, and uh, you know, I said. And she would say, go ahead and uh, do it anyway. I don't want to be the reason that you're not going to be doing it. And I'd say, no, ma'am, I don't want to do it because I don't want you to resent me later on. I don't want you to have a sense of resentment. I don't want anything to disrupt that relationship there. I don't I don't want any any bitterness and, you know, to come up later on. Um and it happens so often that we don't even realize the things that we take in. This is this is the part where I call getting real. And I, I, I didn't even plan on going down this path. I had a whole other thing. But... Um, I want you to think back about something. Think back, and, and it's hard for me because you know I'm I'm getting older, and, and uh, the older I get, it's just like I don't know. People will say, "Well, what was this like for you?" I don't know. I can't even remember back that far. But if you try, I won't, I really want you to try this. I and I want you to focus. Put everything aside. You know, drop whatever you're doing. If, if you can, just for a minute. You know, put everything aside. If you're driving down the road, well, you know, it might not be a good idea. But, um, put everything aside. Just focus and think back to your childhood. Think about what it was like was it um, very picturesque you know with, with the, the perfect mom the perfect dad um, the perfect school and, or was it one of those struggling where you had to see things where that you never wish you'd saw and you had to hear things that you wish you'd never heard. And you had to go to school and people make fun of you. Let me give you an example. I love... Uh, um, what are they called? Come on, TJ. Get your, get your head together. Um... Those uh, thrift stores, uh, Goodwill. They had the Goodwills and the thrift stores and all of those. I'm sorry, my I, I just sometimes it, I can't get my head together, get the words out. Uh, Y'all know this by now, but uh, the thrift stores. I I remember when I was a kid, I was at the thrift stores, and uh, it was like back in 1902 or whatever because I was so old because I'm getting older but uh I remember this one time we was at a uh, thrift store I think it was in Ashland and um it seemed like I was just um knee high to a stump 
And I remember asking my mom, I begged her over and over, Mama, please buy this coat for me. She kept saying, Son, you'll never wear it. And I said, No, Mama, I will, I will, I promise you, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll wear this coat. And it was red, and, and I don't know why, but I just liked it. I, I, I you know, I thought it was really cool looking. And, um, uh, she keeps saying, no, son, you're not going to wear it. If I buy it, it it's just going to sit there, and you're not even going to mess with it. And I said, Mama, I promise I'll wear it. I'll wear it. And she finally said, all right, I'll, I'll buy it for you, you know, as all parents do. Eventually, we all give in and uh, buy it. And uh, I remember I went to school one day, and like I said, it was a red shirt, a red jacket, you know, kind of leathery, and uh, I loved it. I did. I thought, I thought it was cool. But uh, when I was putting it in my locker one day, some a kid said, uh, what are you trying to do, be Michael Jackson? You know, and then he did the little Michael Jackson dance. And I never forgot that. And, I, and from that day forth, I never wore that jacket there again. Just because of that one saying... I mean, we take things and we bury them so deep down inside. What about you? What about your childhood? Was it full of charity? Was it full of that hospitality? Was it full of the love of Jesus Christ? Or was it something that you were trying to run away from? Is it something that you've got buried down deep so far inside of you that... You can't even remember it, but the pain, the pain remembers it. Because it just, you know, it, it, it's like, it's like those moments where you feel like everything's okay, but everything, something's off. You know, something in your body, something in your spirit is just off. Something in your soul is off. And you just go on about your day and um, don't worry about it. you just a little down today, you know, it's no big deal. And, and, and you just kind of distance yourself from people. Why? Because there's some sort of bitterness inside. There's some sort of pain deep inside of you. There's something that has been hid for a long time. Let me tell you, brother and sister, I can't get it out. There are therapists, and like I said in my last message, praise God. You know, there's some godly ones. But God is the only one that can direct your hurt, your pain, and your suffering and make you a new person i'm telling you when i got saved i walked in there a sinner and i'm telling you a sinner i i could tell you i could write a list of everything i did and uh it would probably fill up this entire room and uh it would you know make me blush but um and ashamed so much shame you know the other day uh, um I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm too unworthy even to come to you. I said, I, I've done all these things in my past. and I said, I feel so unworthy just to come to you. I said, can you just come to me? Come down and touch me. And he always does, every single time I've ever asked him, just to come down and help me. Come down and touch me. Come down and minister unto my soul. You know what? Jesus is right there. He's always there. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But what I was saying was when I walked into that church house so heartbroken, full of sin, I mean, burdened down, dragging my jaw, and then I came up to the, I came to the altar, and I got prayed for, and I... <laughs> <laughs> See, here's a big thing now, church. You can get prayed for, and then you can pray through. Mm. Mm -mm. Ooh, I felt a disturbance. I, I felt the water start moving on that one. I, I, something, something was different. 
because you can go to the altar and you can have 15 people around you praying the sinner's prayer for you and it won't make a bit of difference come on now listen to me when you go to that altar you have to be sincere you you confess your sin say lord i'm a sinner lord my life i i, I just it's a mess i i need somebody to straighten it up because i i can't do it anymore And unless you confess it with your own mouth and believe it in your own heart, you can't be saved. They can't save you. And there's nothing wrong with people coming up and praying with you. I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm saying you have to have a sincere heart that is dedicated unto God. And unless you pray through at that old-fashioned altar, you will not experience the change. I remember, like I said, when I walked in, I was so burdened with sin but when i came out let me tell you i had no burdens i had no sin i was a clean holy man i had a whole new perspective perspective on life i had a brightness a glowing just all around me because i was new i was born again and it's like you could hear the angels shouting in the heaven because there was another name written down in the lamb's book of life All because someone, somewhere, showed a little bit of kindness to me. Think about this. Like I said, we were, I was talking about your childhood and my childhood and all the things that happened that just tormented us and I really want you to think about these things because it's it, it's on my heart mm, it's on my heart so much I, I want to talk to you real fast because I'm I, I don't want to get too long on this but I want to talk to you real fast about Jacob and Esau twins born to Rebecca and Isaac and they were as different as day and night I mean they had nothing in common and they didn't even like each other Esau was the firstborn and had the birthright and the Bible says they even fought in the womb they didn't like each other so much and that when Esau was coming out that Jacob was grabbing him by the leg because he just didn't like him. And it's it's ironic because, or it's not really ironic, but it's just odd because they're, they were brothers and they were just so twins and so different. And the Bible says Isaac, Isaac loved Esau. Esau was the man of the field. Esau was the guy that uh, would go out and uh, he was a cunning hunter, the Bible says. You know, he, he, he would lo love to and go out and, uh, you know, shoot a deer or whatever he could get his hands on. One day, Esau came in from the field been out there a while and I don't guess they packed he packed him a lunch or some bottled water or anything and he was about at the point to die and he saw his brother Jacob cooking some beans and he looked at his brother and he said brother I'm at the point where I'm about to die can you please give me a pot of beans? And Jacob said, sure, I'll give you some beans. If 
you give me your birthright. That's what I've been talking about. People wanting something in exchange for it. And he said, fine. I'll, I'm, I'm going to die if I don't get some to eat. I'm going to die if I don't get some type of nourishment. So I have no choice. So he gave him his birthright. You see what I'm talking about? People creating scenarios saying to be able to get money, to be able to advance their own selves, advance their own lives. We have grown nothing but selfish individuals, and we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. And I don't care if that hurts your feelings or not, because it is the truth. Woof. Mm. Mm -mm. We are nothing but selfish people that could care less about anybody else except for us i mean we think about only us me my nobody else nothing nada the neighbor down there needs some help well you know what he shouldn't have let his grass get that high it's not my fault i should not be the, have to be the one to cut it for him come on now all we care about is the way that we feel, the way that we, if we're hungry, if we're um, in need of something, this about us, TJ, you know, it's all about me, it's all about me. What, do I, what can I do to advance my lifestyle? What can I do to make things better for me? I don't care about the neighbor. I don't care about the city. I don't care about the country. I don't care about anybody else. I just want me to be a better person or be a better lifestyle. Not so much a better person, but a better lifestyle. I want to have it all. I want everything right in the palm of my hands. Selfish. And that's exactly what Jacob was. And you can read on, it's in Genesis 25, and I encourage you to read on because um, I'm running out of time here. And it is very, very good story, but it is very tragic because it's the truth of how humanity is. Humanity was not set up to be this way. Jesus gave us the ultimate, the ultimate, listen to me, I know I got bad OCD, but the ultimate example of how we're supposed to be loving, kind, generous, showing hospitality, doing things without asking for anything in return. I mean, Jesus could have easily said, I healed your body, what are you going to do for me now? There was one time that Jesus said, you know, the sparrows have their nests, the birds of the air have their nests, the foxes have holes, I ain't even got a place to lay my head. He could have easily went to some of these people that he had healed, some of these people that he had helped and said, okay, all right, it's payday time. You're, you're going to give me something to eat and you're going to... And you're going to give me a, a room, a board. You're going to do all of these things for me. It's a wonderful thing, though, because Jesus didn't do any of that. He'd sleep on the ground if he had to. He would <coughs> do whatever it took. To show love and kindness to each and everybody and people. Was, I'm closing, but there was a story. There is a story in the Bible. And it talks about a man that was in his bed, unable to move. And there was a line to Jesus, and this man had some friends to help him. 
they were trying to carry him, get him to Jesus, but he said, this guy, he's fading fast, you know, he, he, he wasn't going to make it very long. And, mm, feeling my Lord, oh God. Instead of waiting it out, they said, I got to get him to, I got to get him to the master. They, Jesus was in this little building and took some ropes and dropped those, tied it to the bed of his, their friend and dropped him down. Jesus healed that man and that man gra grabbed his bed and walked off with it on his back. But the point, the thing I'm concerned about today about that story is what if that was today you know what people would be like you you cut the line and then you would have to find people to even carry your bed because people they don't care anymore Oh, it's too heavy. It's too much work. You, you know what? i got to be somewhere at 5. I can't do that today. Um, I'm sure he'll be fine till tomorrow. What happened to the days where when somebody was sick, we used to go pray for them in the hospitals? I mean, what happened to the days where we stayed down upon our knees with our brothers and sisters until until heaven was reached? And we didn't check our cell phones. We didn't check the time. We didn't check out everything around us, wondering who was still there, who wasn't there, what they were doing, what they were saying. All we cared about is trying to help this person pray through. That's all those people wanted, those f friends of his. Yes, Jesus healed him. Yes, that man got healed but what about his friends that actually took all that effort you know how much how much it would effort it would take to be able to concoct something like that that's amazing that's a that, that's true friendship that's true charity and i'm sure that they didn't go back and say all right now where's my payday People die every day just because of money. They die because they want um, they want what's coming to them. Pretty much, people are getting shot just because of it, stabbed because of it. Possessions nine tenths of the law, and people take it very seriously. But what about you? What if God spoke to you right now and said, you know that extra bike that's in your garage? I want you to give it to the kid down the street. You're not. Your kids have brand new bikes. or I want you to give it to the kid down the street. Or what if he said, I want you to share your dinner with the neighbor across the street. How would you react? Most of us would say, nope. Not today. Not in this neighborhood. Not not in this world. You know what? I, I, I'm closing, I promise. Will we say not in this kind of neighborhood? It might not be this kind of neighborhood if we would show some love and kindness and start changing things. Allowing God to change things through us we can change neighborhoods we can change towns not because of ourselves but because of the charity that is within us the charity that is jesus christ and that hospitality see i can get that word out hospitality just takes me a while heavenly father i thank you today and lord i love you so much I thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you showed us on the cross. 
I thank you for the ultimate spectacle of love, Lord. I thank you for brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord, I pray that we would all, myself, my, you know, myself included, Lord, my family included, Lord, have charity, have love, have hospitality, covereth multitude of sins. Not to be like Jacob was and say, what am I going to get out of this, Lord? Heavenly Father, I pray that if there's one person, Lord, and I can't bring, pray them into heaven, but if they pray this prayer, Lord, and if they believe it in their heart and in their soul, then when they open their eyes, they'll be a new man. Things will just be so changed, a new, or a new woman. Things will be so changed. The dark cloud will be gone. The light will shine through once again. That if they believe that you are the Son of God, that you came to earth, you performed miracles, you lived here 33 years, died on an old rugged cross for our sins. You took the weight of our sins upon you, Lord. Died on that cross. Rose again the third day. Proving that you have power over life Death and hell. The Bible says we're saved. We are a new creature in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I feel humbled right now. I, I felt the Spirit of God so much. I, I just feel this humbleness. Because I, I just... It, it's been so surreal. Um... I apologize for my speech. Um, I, I am working, trying to be able to um, get my words up better. But um, you know what? I, I am the way God made me, and God made me with this thing and uh, so if I'm good enough for him I'm sure good enough for everyone else and but anyway I love each and every one of you I want you all to just praise the Lord this week just worship him show some kindness show some hospitality I got it again and show some hospitality show some love so show some charity Towards someone. And make it a habit. And make it a selfless deed. Not something that you get in return. I was. Walmart one time. And. I'd had the back surgeries. And you know. The only. Thing was it wasn't as advanced things weren't as advanced as they are now and I saw these people struggling with this ride and uh, it seemed like every time a car breaks down you know a, a crowd gathers but nobody really wants to do anything um I just, I'm sorry, I tell it like it is, um, but I went over, and, uh, I fixed it, and got it going, and took every, everything in me, but I didn't do it for money, 
I didn't do it for any glory. I mean, nobody... They, they were uh, different speaking people, and uh, so I didn't even know what they were saying anyway. And uh, I didn't do it for anything. And I'm not saying anything, trying to boost myself up, or saying that I'm good, or, you know, anything like that, or I'm special. I'm just saying it's deeds like that that God expects from us to go forth and bless others. I was able to do that that day, and um, to be honest, it was an honor. Because uh, I was being used by the Lord that day. And any time you're being used by the Lord, that's an honor. God bless each and every one of you. I'm so sorry it's so long. I kept saying I wasn't going to make it long. But, you know, I get to talking. And uh, I just love to talk about the Lord. I love each and every one of you. And remember, all you have to do is... Call upon the name of the Lord anytime, any place, and He is right there for you.